Welcome, everyone. You are tuned into Perfectly Planted. This is the podcast and the YouTube channel that is dedicated to growing together on our journey towards a healthier, happier, and more sustainable lifestyle. I'm your co-host, Daphne Bascom. I'm a vegan health and fitness coach, coach and an advocate for all things that are plant-based. Um, I'm perfectly planted. We believe in the power of positivity and the strength of community. And so we're here to empower you, to nurture your growth, and to help you bloom into the best version of yourself. And we're not just talking about fitness and nutrition, but also self-love, mental health, and fostering a deep respect for our beautiful planet. So good morning, Vesame, and good morning, Dr. Broussard. How are you today? Great. Good morning, uh, good morning Daphne, and good morning, Vesame. Good morning. This is an exciting episode. I am so excited because we decided to do a uh, cooking show for everybody, especially with the holidays coming up. And we invited Dr. Brooke Bassard, who was on our uh, previous episode number 40. So if you have not seen that, go check it out um, because she was sharing some amazing recipes and that are all loaded on her website, plantsoveranimals.com slash recipes, if you wanna go direct to the recipes. Um, and so we thought that it would be amazing for us to do a little cooking rendition where plants are really at the forefront. And as Daphne was mentioning earlier, no animals were harmed in this, in this episode, which is amazing, I think. So Brooke, um, welcome back. We are so excited to have you with us today. I just, for our viewers, I just wanna reintroduce you. You swapped your white physician coat for an apron, your stethoscope for a spatula, and really took the initiative to help others around you and others that come to you in trying to help reverse some of the chronic conditions and prevent chronic conditions really through um, education and nutrition and taking more of a plant-based approach. And so we are delighted to have you with us again to share some of the recipes that you have. Um, before we get started, do you wanna talk a little bit more about some of the initiatives that you've had recently and um, you know, most recent activity that, that, you've, uh, that you've discovered through you know, various recipes and helping others? Uh, well, thank you so much, Besame, for that uh, nice recap. And um, yeah, I'm so excited to be back on the show today. My recent uh, efforts have been really marketing the book, um, Chew on This, which we talked about in the last episode. Yeah. Um, and it turns out once you write a book, the book marketing world is enormous. So just trying to get the book out into, you know, various channels, uh, it takes a lot of time and energy, but I think having this information written down and told in this um, in the way that I do in the book with these short stories, I think is so valuable as a resource for people. It, you know, helps bust myths. It um, helps explain just the basic physiology of how the body uses food. And um, so that's really where I'm focusing my efforts right now, um, along with seeing my clients and teaching some classes. But uh, those are my main areas of, of focus. Wonderful. And yeah, this, that's amazing. Uh, the book, I do want to emphasize the book is amazing. We've read it and the short story makes it so relatable and also easy to consume. So thank you for that format. And I know that, um, you know, the holidays are around us. We, we just next week and Thursday is our Thanksgiving. And then of course we have other holidays following that. So um, can you tell us a little bit more about how you would navigate um, really holiday eating and what do you t share with some of your clients? Not necessarily give us a secret sauce, but, um, you know, how, how can, can you share some ideas and tips of how people can navigate the holidays and staying on track? Well, Vesme, I will always give you the secret sauce because <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I'm ready just to share it all. You've got some family recipes that I understand you hold tight and that is great. Um, but um, but as far as the healthy eating, healthy living goes, we got to let everybody know that eating plants is the healthiest way um, to, to live our lives. And what I work with my clients on is preparation, 
both mentally and physically. So knowing what you're going to prepare, whether or not you're hosting, whether you're going to somebody else's house and maybe you're going to take some of your own dishes, um, being prepared. So planning ahead of time. These are the things that I want to have for this holiday meal, making your list, doing your shopping. If it's something you can prepare ahead of time, which the recipes I'm showing today, you can prepare ahead of time. And I mean, you could make them today or tomorrow and just pull them out of the fridge and reheat them. And they're actually, I think, better uh, reheated because the flavors all meld together. That's sort of mm -hmm. one of the beauties of plant foods is they just get better and better <laughs> every day that they're in the fridge. Um, but um, but I, think, I think planning and preparing are the most important things we can do. And just remembering that, um, that we have values that we are, um, you know, sort of holding dear to us. And, and the significance of Thanksgiving really is about um, coming together, showing gratitude, showing compassion. And, um, and there's nothing wrong with eating a plant-based meal for the holiday. You're not breaking a tradition. You're just um, sort of emphasizing the significance of it and what it means to you. The food brings us together. And uh, I mean, you can create new traditions with plant-based mm -hmm. meals, you know, plantifying, if that's a word, some of the traditional meals that a lot of us have eaten over the holidays. So it's a great way to introduce, especially in a family that may be both plant-based and still eating animal products, just to how wonderful these, these foods can taste. Absolutely, and today I'll plantify, I like that word, <laughs> I'll plantify um, a gravy recipe and a stuffing recipe so that, you know, those two are, are very simple and they're known go-tos for the holiday meal. Brooke, why don't we turn it over to you? We'd love to hear about your lovable lentil loaf. And you go ahead and, and why don't you share with our viewers the wonderful dishes that you're ready to prepare? Okay. Um, so we'll start with the lovable lentil loaf, which you can do so many things with. So let's prepare the um, sort of the essence of it. And then I'll show you how you can either make it into a loaf or stuff it into a squash or a bell pepper or those sorts of things. So you're going to start with um, brown lentils. You can start with, um, you know, really any lentil, as long as it's not a red lentil, red lentils get mushy and we want the texture of the brown or the green lentils. So I usually buy them in bulk um, and cook them from, from dried. And so you can do that pretty easily. It's um, one of the simplest, ways to cook lentils. You just put them on the stove, a cup of lentils, three cups of water, bring it to a boil and then simmer it for 18 to 20 minutes. You want to keep an eye on it though, because you don't want the lentils to get mushy. You need a little bit of texture for the loaf. So the other thing is in some grocery stores, you can actually find lentils canned and already cooked. So if this is something that is appealing to you, just to cut out the step of cooking the lentils, just use the cans like you would do with canned beans. So we've got the lentils and I went ahead and, and cooked them ahead of time. So I've got two cups of uh, cooked lentils here that we'll use in our base. Um, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna chop and saute some veggies. And for this particular lentil loaf, I chose yellow onions, and mushrooms and some garlic. So we've got onions that I've chopped, mushrooms that I've chopped. And then for the garlic, I cheated and I, well, it's not really cheating. <laughs> I used minced garlic right out of, um, uh, out of this jar. Now this is just in water. So you, you wanna try to avoid uh, minced garlic that might be in oil. So you wanna get it in, in the water. Um, so those three ingredients I have sauteed together and that's what it comes out to look like. So that takes about five minutes on the stove. 
and I don't put any oil in the bottom. It's a water saute. So really I just put the onions in, I run it under the water just to get a little bit of uh, moisture in the bottom, saute, throw the mushrooms in, keep sauteing, and then it's done. Hmm. So we've got those that we're gonna put together with um, the, the quinoa, the walnuts, and then all of our um, moisture ingredients that are gonna hold everything together. So I am going to bring the lentils and the mushrooms over to my food processor, and I'm gonna turn you guys to face me. Okay. And then we are going to, okay. So we've got the food processor here. So we're gonna put our lentils in the bottom of the food processor. Everybody can see this okay? We can yeah? see it. That's okay. great. Okay. We're gonna put those in. Okay, and then we've got our, our veggie mixture. We're gonna add that. And when you add to the food processor, make sure you sort of spread everything out so that it's not clumped in one area. Okay, so then we've got a quarter cup of walnuts that we're gonna add. They add a nice texture and crunch along with those omega-3s that we all like to try to get in. But if you have somebody with a nut allergy, you can swap that for sunflower seeds mm -hmm. or even carrots. So mm -hmm. any of those would work. Then we're gonna put in a quarter cup of tomato paste. And what does the tomato paste do? Oh, it brings out this amazing flavor um, that I find is almost critical to the lentil loaf. You can really taste the tomato um, in there and it's just delicious. Um, then we're gonna add two um, tablespoons of flaxseed. I'm gonna sprinkle that in. And you guys know what we use flaxseed for? Yeah, the binder. Good, yeah. Good binding, yeah. It's our binder. Egg replacement. So that re mm -hmm. Exactly, so that's how we replace eggs in our plant-based cooking. Okay, so then um, for more of that umami flavor, I like to add um, tamari, or you can add soy sauce or coconut aminos. So we've got two tablespoons of that. And then we're gonna do two tablespoons of the apple cider vinegar. So these are all just different levels of, of flavors. And of so we're sort of, yeah, the acidity is gonna layer yeah. a different flavor in there. And then I love Dijon. So mm. you can use other types of mustard if you want. Um, I love Dijon mustard too. Mm -hmm. I think it just has great flavor and a good base for salad dressings too, I think. Oh, totally. I yeah. love it for salad dressings. Okay, so now we're gonna pulse this. Now these tops are. Okay, so I'm just gonna pulse this a few times. And for, so for, want, for people okay. that don't have a um, food processor, can they get, use like a potato masher or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you, you need some uh, elbow grease for that. No. But yeah, but you totally can. So what, really what you're trying to do, and when I'm gonna bring this back over now to our main setup. So I'll meet you back over at my cutting board. Okay. Sometimes I've actually used, um, if I didn't have a food processor with me, I would use, pulse a blender sometimes, and then you could mash. Mm -hmm. I, it just breaks it up a little bit more, and oftentimes people will have a blender. But you're right, Daphne, a potato masher, you'll need extra elbow grease, but doable. Yes. Um, and if you don't have a blender or a food processor, I would cook the lentils even a little bit longer so that it's easier uh, yeah. to mash. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, because, yeah, what we're trying to do, so we, we don't want to forget our quinoa because um, that's another um, critical part of holding the whole thing together. Like breadcrumbs. So, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm using those in place of breadcrumbs because we're going to get, we're going to get our bread, but we're going to get it in the stuffing. Yeah. So here we're going to is that quinoa when you, is that quinoa cooked or is it dry? I can't tell from my That angle. is cooked. Cooked. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh yeah, not, that gives me a chance to tell you 
a fun little um, hack that I learned about cooking quinoa. Have you guys ever cooked it in the Instapot? Yes. yes. I have Oh not. my gosh. It's much easier in the Instapot. It, it's it? so great. Yeah, it's one cup of quinoa to one and a half cups of water. Is that right, Daphne? I'm pretty sure. That's a sound some either water or vegetable broth, whichever uh -huh. one we have available. Yep. Yes. And then literally you set the, the Instapot for one minute. Done. Oh, one minute. Oh, and one it's minute. done. Oh my goodness. Yep. And in the time that it takes to do the natural release of the steam, it cooks uh, that's what cooks the quinoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So can you see, I've got my mixture in here and now I'm just going to add the quinoa that's cooked. And I cooked that in the Instapot. Mm -hmm. I actually used a, like a tricolored quinoa. Yum. Because that's mm -hmm. what I had. And I, I think that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so the last thing we need to add into this, particularly for our holiday theme, are going to be our herbs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do you guys have favorite herbs that you like for Thanksgiving? Things I that love remind sage. you. Sage. Okay. I love sage. Yeah. In pult sometimes poultry seasoning that you can buy has the sage and. Um, a little bit of time, but the, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, in the recipe, I've got oregano, thyme, parsley, and sage with some pepper. Mm. Um, okay. But if you want to add rosemary or mm -hmm. like Daphne said, the poultry seasoning, um, you know, all of these are great. And you can use either dried or fresh. Mm -hmm. So mm. I just put together a little dish so that you wouldn't have to watch me measure all these things out. I had, you know, just the dried versions um, that I was going to add to this. And then I'm going to show you the fresh versions for the stuffing. So I've added all of those. I'm going to mix them in. And now we have everything we need to make our loaf into whatever shape we want. And if you look at the recipe on the website, you'll notice that I shaped it into a heart for Thanksgiving or Valentine's Day or um, somebody's birthday or, um, but you can, you can shape it however you want. You can um, put it in a loaf pan if you want. If you mm -hmm. want to really, you know, give it a lot of structure, you can cook it in a loaf pan. The other thing you can do with it is you can stuff it into different squashes. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you two that I did. Okay, so this is a spaghetti squash that I've stuffed with the lentil loaf. Oh, yeah. So for spaghetti squashes, you just cut them in half, mm -hmm. scoop out the seeds, place them face down on your baking dish, and bake them for, you know, 45 to 60 minutes, depending on how mm -hmm. big they are. This one took 60 minutes. Um, at 400 degrees and and it also depends on how cooked you want your spaghetti squash some mm -hmm. people like it more mm -hmm. al dente um, but squashes are so traditional for thanksgiving mm -hmm. because squashes are what was around back when they had the first thanksgiving they didn't have potatoes they weren't harvesting potatoes then and um you know there's there's things that were around that we sort of forget about and we could bring them back if we if we use these little you know fun ways to put our lentil loaf together so this is a pumpkin yeah. and oh, adorable. I had, yeah yeah and With i put a little the lid on it <laughs> cute yeah little personalized so, servings exactly yeah. Uh huh. so and you could do this with an acorn squash mm -hmm. you can do it with a red bell pepper um you could stuff a portabella all these ways that you can use the the lentil loaf but for today i was going to show you how to shape it if you wanted to um you know make it into the lovable lentil loaf i just take it and see how i'm, I'm just putting it in my hands and it's almost mm -hmm. looking like you know a football uh -huh. <laughs> i was watching a lot of football this weekend um, UVA won their home game, which was uh, <laughs> the first home win for the coach. 
for, for their new coach. So that, that was there huge. Um, so I'm going to do that twice, but I'm going to angle the second one so that we end up with the heart shape. And I will show you, I'll move this bowl out of the way in just a second. So I'm gonna move that bowl out of the way. And if we angle it, Oh, how cute and easy. You, you don't even need a mold. No. Can you see that? We can. Yes. Good. Looks great. Okay. And if you want to, you know, give it a little more indentation there, you can. So then you'll, you'll bake this at 375, no, 350 um, for 45 minutes, um, depending on the size. Like, um, I have enough here, so I could do two hearts. And if I did, I'd probably cut my time down. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just check on it after about 30 minutes, start to check on it. Once the edges start to turn brown, it's ready. Pull it out mm -hmm. and let it sit. And it's really, it holds together much better mm -hmm. if you make it the day before and then reheat it. Mm -hmm. And the flavors actually meld together better. So uh, that's what I recommend for, for the lentil loaf. A lovable lentil loaf. That okay. looks great. That looks delicious. And I love the fact that you could just eat it if you wanted it. Well. That's what I was going to say. It's all <laughs> yeah. cooked. It's ready I to like, go. I, could just, I would just take taste to make sure everything was good. And it would be like totally. my partial lunch. Before it goes totally. In the <laughs> I'm so with you, Vesame. Yes, that is totally what I do. Um, good. And if, okay. If you add so, up the cost of what all those ingredients make, it's almost yeah. nothing. Yeah. It's probably $2 a serving mm -hmm. or less. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I actually started to add up the uh the stuffing ingredients and it wasn't even the ten dollars and i was like wow and this makes a lot of stuffing so mm -hmm. um but i hadn't gotten to the lentil loaf yet i was i was just curious so that um, stuffing is my guilty pleasure it's not the potatoes it's the stuffing i am with <laughs> i can't you. wait to see, watch your stuffing recipe though and i and i love potatoes but but the stuffing oh my stuffing gosh. is where it's at yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so let's talk about the stuffing so I call it the standalone stuffing because it doesn't need to be shoved into anything mm -hmm. except our mouth. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you can use like a loaf of bread. Can you, this mm -hmm. is like a, a mm -hmm. loaf of spelt bread mm -hmm. uh, from our local bakery. Um, this is a sliced loaf of sourdough bread from Trader Joe's. And I used almost the entire thing when I prepped the stuffing last night. Um, that's sourdough bread, Brooke? Is that what you think? It is. Okay. So you can really go anywhere Any with type of bread. Mm -hmm. the bread. Like you can buy the breads that already have some rosemary infused into them, oh, which is yes. really a, a cool way to get mm -hmm. the rosemary in. Mm -hmm. um, some people like the breads that have the olives in them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, yeah, those are all fun ideas. But if the bread's already sliced, you're going to get thinner um, pieces. Whereas if you want chunkier stuffing, you'll want to start with an unsliced loaf mm -hmm. and then make them the size that you want. Mm -hmm. And the size of the, of the pieces is, you know, really gives a different flair to the stuffing, depending on how you want to do it. Mm -hmm. But what you want to do is you want to try to cut it the night before and let it sit out and get a little bit stale because yeah. that's going to mm -hmm. give it a heartier texture. So, so we've got our stuffing, um, our bread all cut and ready from last night, cutting that. And the first two ingredients on the recipe are onions and apples. So again, most of our recipes, we start with chopping and sauteing. So we're going to chop our onions, chop our apples, and then saute. So I took my onion, chopped it up, took my apple, chopped it up mm -hmm. and sauteed for you already. So bring this over. Now, years ago, I did learn, a mis I wrote a note to myself, make sure you chop the apples smaller. Mm. A, they'll cook faster mm -hmm. and B, there'll be more of them all throughout the stuffing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do you see how fine I've chopped the ingredients yeah. for this yeah. recipe? Oh, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I, I like them to be small. Okay, so if you use a big enough pan to saute, then you can use this as your mixing bowl. Okay. Uh huh. One less thing to clean. So we've got our apples, our onions, 
Then we're going to add scallions. So three scallions I've already chopped up. We're going to add those in. Then we're going to add in our stuffing. This is making me hungry. I know. <laughs> I was just going to say that. And you can sort of think, hmm, did I use, did I, you know, how big was this loaf of bread? Do I want, like, what ratio do I want between mm -hmm. my bread and my other ingredients? So I think I'm going to stop mm -hmm. about there and start to mix this up. The last thing we're going to add is our veggie broth, because mm -hmm. once you add your veggie broth, things might clump together that you need them to spread out. So, um, okay. So we do need to add our herbs in here. So we've got parsley, thyme, sage, rosemary, mm. and, and let me show you those. Okay. So for our parsley, you know, store it in the fridge in some water to keep it fresh and alive. Now with parsley, do you guys eat the stems or not eat the stems? Stems. I, I, I do eat the stems, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so with parsley, because it's not woody, you know, you can bend it, you can flex it. It's not going to be, you know, something that's really getting in your way and giving you a bad flavor. You can just chop it and add it in. And, you know, if I have some big stems, I cut them off. But otherwise, whoops, can you guys see me chopping this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got those, and all these herbs, if you use fresh herbs in your stuffing, it just makes it really pretty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the and dried herbs are fine if that's what you've got and that's all you have the bandwidth for. One thing about using fresh herbs is it gives somebody a job. If you've got a mother-in-law or <laughs> a brother-in-law and they're like, what can I do to help? And you say, can you take these herbs and prep them for me? That is a perfect job for them, right? Um, and then you can say, okay, whoever preps the, you know, uh, the rosemary gets first dibs on dinner, you know, <laughs> whichever <laughs> herb they think is the hardest. <laughs> Yeah, so you've got your sage, right? And you just cut those into, you know, little tiny pieces. I love fresh herbs. I feel like there's, I mean, dried is great too. It gives some flavor, but there's something about fresh herbs, especially in a dish like stuffing, that's really, you know, amazing. I agree, yeah. Oh gosh, this, you know what, Daphne, we should have done this together. Maybe we, we could have been with in Brooke's kitchen, <laughs> yeah. being the taste testers here. That would have been great because yeah, I definitely we, am we going to, to try this. Next time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I so you can really just too. do this to taste, you know, okay. um, I sort of use two tablespoons as a rough guide. Um, but if, and if you know, you don't like a particular herb, leave it out, you know, mm -hmm. just put in what you mm -hmm. like. Yeah. Okay. So we've and got the, those. Yeah. The question we get sometimes, is there a particular brand of knives and pots that you like to use? There isn't. Um, <laughs> these knives I got as a gift from, um, a store called New West Knife Works mm. out in Jackson, Wyoming. Oh. And they were, they're an amazing gift. I mean, absolutely amazing gift. I love this knife. Um, and as far as my pots go, I think a lot of them are Calphalon. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I've had them for years. I think the main thing to, for me is years ago, I used to use um, Teflon coated pans. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh gosh, like I really just want stainless steel. Mm -hmm. I thought they would be too hard to clean and turns out they're not. And particularly mm -hmm. when you eat plant-based and you don't have a bunch of oil and fat mm -hmm. that like gunks up your pans, like it so cleans easy. up well, yeah. mm -hmm. so easy. Yeah. Okay. So once you've got, can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Looks delicious. Okay. okay. So this is our stuffing that we've now dispersed. Everything, you know, is mixed well. And we're going to add our veggie broth. 
and I put two cups on the recipe, but you know, it really just depends on how much you need to get the right moisture level for your bread. Uh, if it's too dry, you're not going to be happy. So we want to make sure we mm -hmm. get it moist enough. And I think two cups is going to be the right amount for this recipe. This actual batch that we put together. And you don't want it drowning, but you don't want it, you don't want it dry. And then for people who, you know, want salt and pepper, uh, they can just add it as they dish it onto their uh, plate. But that way, you know, you don't have to worry about if somebody need lower sodium or somebody's salt free. Some people don't love pepper as much as I do. <laughs> um, yeah, so then you'll just take this and put it into a baking dish. Now I did learn one year that I didn't line it with parchment paper. It really mm -hmm. stuck to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this one, I'm just going to put it right in here. I think I'm going to do two different baking dishes because this, this particular dish I picked out was a little bit on the smaller side. So I'll make two batches of that. But, but I'm going to bring one out of the oven to show you mm -hmm. what it looks like when it's done. Oh, delicious. Oh, it's Yum. So good. Yes. I was eating this for lunch yesterday after I made it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> How long do you bake that for, Brooke? So this I bake for 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Then, okay. Yeah. And then about half at 375 and then about halfway through, um, I stirred it up so that okay. more of the pieces would get crispier and crunchier. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. That looks delicious. Yeah, so that, that is so good. Okay, and then let's see. Was there anything else we wanted to talk about with the stuffing? No, I think Should that you could break it up and then add the herbs that you want. It looks delicious. It, yeah. it looks really good. Good, okay. And then the last thing is the gravy. Yeah. So with the lentil loaf, it is really nice to have a gravy to put over top of it, um, whether it's sta a standalone loaf or whether you've got it in one of the squashes, the gravy just really takes it up a notch. And this gravy is so simple to make. Um, I'm going to bring this pan over because what you're going to do is you're going to assemble everything in one pan and then cook it together and it's done. So it's two cups of veggie broth. Let's put that in the pan. And the next ingredient is oat flour. Now, if you don't have oat flour, how can we make oat flour? Take some oatmeal and grind it up. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly what I did yesterday. I got my container of oats, put them in my blender, yep. and made oat flour. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we're just going to add our oat flour right in with our veggie broth. Then we're going to add in nutritional yeast, which mm. gives it such a good flavor. So and you get your B vitamins there. and yeah. Yes. B vitamins okay. and nutritional yeast, Daphne? Okay. I was not aware of that. I just thought it just gave you a, a more cheesy flavor, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, then we're going to add a little bit Let's of soy see. sauce, a little bit of onion powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, and then Vesemme, I'm back to the Dijon. Yes. But just a Love half a Dijon. teaspoon. Okay, just a little bit. Just a little bit for this one. You don't want the you don't want your gravy to taste like mustard. Yes. Yes. Right. Agree. Yeah. I feel like this gives it a little bit of the added flavor, a little maybe a little tang, and also creams it up a bit. Uh huh. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mustard always is good at making things a little creamier. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the oat flour in there to do that. And the um, nutritional yeast will help with that also. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to put that. Can you see this? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to put that on the stove and whisk it for five minutes. Okay. Oh, five minutes went by already. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Time our flies when you're having fun. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, and it's delicious. It really is. It's perfect. My younger son loves it. Um, so my older son does gravy? too. Go ahead, Brooke. Oh, no, I was just going to say my, everyone loves it, but my younger son mm -hmm. is the hardest one to please. So if I say that my younger son oh. loves it, it means it's awesome. Oh, good. So now do you put the gravy on top of your lentil loaf or do you just have it as a side, like a dipping or can you use that gravy for other recipes and have you? Oh yeah. Everything like okay. you, yeah. If um, like my husband, he loves things to be saucy. So there's mm -hmm. no point in me just giving him the lentil loaf. Like mm -hmm. I would put the lentil loaf on his plate, you know, drizzle the gravy, gravy over top and mm -hmm. then it, and then have the gravy on the table also Fine. so okay. that as he's eating, I just can picture him spinning yeah. the table around. We've got a lady Susan. So yeah, <laughs> just we'll be adding more. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. And Brooke, could people add a little bit of the sage and the thyme and the rosemary into the gravy too? Yeah. I, yeah I'm sure you could. I never have, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we, and th those herbs, not only do they give a great flavor, but I think it's so important to remember like how powerful they are as plants yes. for their anti-inflammatory properties, their, you know, cancer fighting properties, their mm -hmm. antioxidant properties, like herbs, they just don't get enough recognition exactly. for like how beneficial they are. Uh, so it's, it is really nice to, uh, to include them just for health purposes, let alone how delicious they are. Mm -hmm. And the other amazing thing for anyone listening or watching is you've prepped three dishes pretty much in about 30 plus minutes. Yeah. Um, aside from the cooking time, the prep time is not hours and hours and hours. It really is very easy and approachable for anyone who has the ingredients handy. Yeah. And there's a lot of shared ingredients. So like if you're, um, mm -hmm. if you've got your onions out, just cut all your onions exactly. at the same time mm -hmm. and then measure the amounts out for the lentil loaf and for the stuffing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. I think you, I'm ready. To, I'm coming to your house for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Don't tell my family. <laughs> Don't tell my family. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Brooke, for sharing those recipes. I think, Daphne, if you're ready, I'm going to share a little bit of mine. I think I we are ready for go to go for dessert and some okay. special family recipes. So there's um, the first one I'll start off with is the Italian flat beans that everybody raves my mom to make. Okay, so this is my mom's recipe. It's a traditional, the way she grew up cooking almost every meal. So the base and I went ahead because it does, the cook time is about an hour. So I went ahead and made it in my, um, in my Le Creuset Dutch oven earlier this morning, but it's Italian flat beans and that's what they look like. Okay, so the ingredients for this, so simple, and the same base ingredients that you will make everything. So you can either use water or olive oil. So being from the Mediterranean, we love our olive oil. So we use a little bit of light olive oil, but please use water if you are oil free and you dice in a medium sized onion add that and then a couple cloves of garlic and let that saute and simmer for a little bit um, from there you once they sweat out a little we add just one can of petite diced tomatoes and then you add fill the can up with water because we don't let anything go to waste. And so we fill it up with water to get the last bits of the tomatoes and pour that in and let it simmer for about five minutes. That is gives you this base sauce that is delicious. You can add your seasoning. So we our traditional seasonings are a little bit of salt and lemon juice. And then um, the last is I love frozen 
vegetables over canned, but you can use one of the two. If it's canned, you cook it less time. If it's frozen fresh, then you cook it a little bit more. But these are the Italian flat beans that we get. So one bag for the uh, proportion that I just showed. And then what we do is we add that in and mix it all around and coat the beans in the tomato mixture and then just let it simmer and cook on low for about 45 to 50 minutes, con constantly checking and stirring. And then you get these delicious beans that we eat as opposed to having the traditional green bean casserole. So they are delicious. Uh, you can add any additional herbs that you want, but um, the base of the tomato sauce, onions and garlic is the base for everything. So we also make um, like navy beans, add canned navy beans to that. And it's a delicious dish to eat over quinoa. You can do, you know, black beans, you could do anything, um, even lentils too, or a lentil and garbanzo bean mixture is also delicious. So that's that. Um, the next is we are going to make a plant-based pumpkin pie. So the traditional has a lot of the dairy. So we're cutting the dairy out. This recipe is courtesy of it doesn't taste like chicken, but I did alter the recipe just slightly. So what we're going to do is we're going, I did make one ahead of time. So see how delicious that looks? Um, and it's very easy. Now, my first concern was how am I going to make a vegan, um, vegan uh, pie shell? Well, I like to take shortcuts. And what I did was I found in the frozen food section of my grocery store, I found a gluten-free vegan pie crust that comes already formed for me. <laughs> so being the busy mom that I am and running all around and spending half my life on the soccer fields, I take those <laughs> shortcuts <laughs> as long as they're the nutritional ones. And so that pie crust is ready to go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to add one can of pumpkin. Now, please make sure that it's not pumpkin pie filling because that has all of the added flavors and we're going to add our own flavors and um, and sweeteners and all. So you put one can of the pumpkin in your bowl. That's and a then 14 and a half ounce can or 16 it is. Yes, it is the 15 ounce can of pumpkin. And then um, this recipe is saying for, from the, it doesn't taste like chicken, says you do need to use a full fat plant-based milk. And so you can use oat milk, you can use uh, coconut milk. And so we do have, one 13 and a half can of, uh, of coconut milk. And so we'll pour that to the, in the bowl and mix this together. I'm actually gonna switch over to my, um, my whisk. And so mix this together really good. And then from there you add a half a cup of brown sugar. So this recipe calls for brown sugar and maple syrup. Um, I didn't have any more maple syrup in my pantry, so I'm using brown sugar. I tend, I find, I tend to find that there's recipes are um, end up being a little too sweet, mm -hmm. and so I always cut back the sugar naturally. And so I'm just using it. The recipe calls for a half a cup of brown sugar and a quarter cup of maple syrup. I'm just doing the brown sugar. You can just use the maple syrup. I'm going to leave that up to everybody listening and whatever flavor you could do half and half too but i found that um it was sweet enough when i tasted the batter because as you know being plant-based i could taste the batter there's nothing that's <laughs> going to be <laughs> messing, messing me up here there's no raw ingredients okay and then also a quarter cup of cornstarch you can also use tapioca starch if you want so that goes in. This is a really easy um, pumpkin pie. And I find that sometimes the traditional pumpkin pie, um, there I always have to constantly look at the recipe to make sure that I'm doing it right. And, um, and this one was pretty easy. All right, so that's all mixed in like that. And then we're gonna add our seasonings. Mm -hmm. And so I have pumpkin pie spice, cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of salt to bring the flavors together. So I mix that up and that's it. Pour it in your pie shell and bake it 350 for one hour. I will say that when I baked mine last night, um, and the recipe does point this out as well, is that it will be cracked on the sides, but jiggly on the inside. 
And so what you want to do is um, take it out, let it cool naturally, and then pop it in your fridge for about four hours. Um, but here we go. So that looks so good. Looks and I did have a couple extra, a little bit, and I put it in a ramekin to be crustless. And um, it was, I was just going to ask you about that. Yeah. You could do it crustless too. I did make it crustless now um, with it. I would just alter the baking time just slightly um, just because you don't have the crust to bake either. So this crust was already raw and it says just do it unbaked. It's super easy. Just pop it in the oven and there we have our pumpkin pie. You can use some whipped uh, coconut cream or whipped plant-based cream and enjoy your pumpkin pie in the plant-based fashion. So, um, oh, you know what? I did forget one thing and that was a vanilla extract, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll set that aside. I think it will be fine without it. The next recipe that I wanted to share is a fan favorite of the family and it is pumpkin fluff. And now pumpkin fluff actually has a separate, uh, well, it uses Cool Whip, um, which is not plant-based it uses cream but I, what i did was i found a true whip brand vegan um, which i was excited to find and so this recipe the end product looks like this so we're going to get there in a second so this has one 15 ounce can of pumpkin um, that i've already mixed into my bowl and one five ounce box of pudding uh -huh. and so it looks like this <laughs> Vanilla pudding or? Yes, instant vanilla pudding, yes. And then I love pumpkin pie spice. The recipe calls for one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. I use two. Um, and so we mix that up. And then once that's mixed, then I take my Cool Whip and fold it in. Sorry, True Whip, vegan True, true Whip. And this is actually super easy and um, and anybody can make it. I have my kids help me make it also. Um, so two of these, because it would take one, uh, what is each ounce of this? Let me look real quick, guys. Um, I think it's a 15 ounce serving of whip. So that's two of these. All right, and so you put these in and then you just fold in the whipped cream Till it's completely mixed. This is a good arm workout, Daphne. Oh, good. <laughs> right? I mean, we gotta work our we got arms. Two workouts today. Yes. And where, where um, did you find that True Whip, Bessemay? I've never. I seen found that. that at my Publix, and oh, I was interesting. really amazed at that. I, you know what? My our grocery store is down here. Um, after we. Uh, we check out they're like did you find everything and sometimes i tell them yes or no mm -hmm. and give them ideas of what more to bring in because i think what they do is they take that back and then add it in and so sometimes i'll mention and they'll, all of a sudden i'll have my plant-based stuff <laughs> available <laughs> so yeah the Publix had this um and there's an earth fair near me i think any any place that has more of a you know i wonder if your trader joe's has that brooke so no, I would, have to right, look. yeah. And so, yeah, it's a vegan true whip. And what I'll do is I'll use, reuse this, these containers to put it back in because then I serve it out of that. So that's how it looks. Yum. It's so good. And um, you can mix it as much as you can, but I don't mind having chunks of pumpkin. I mean, who doesn't like pumpkin? Um, and that's it. The sweetness comes from the whipped. And then I have just some ginger snaps. You can also serve it with fruit. And then that's it. We just eat it like this. <laughs> Best man, so do you ever use a, a handheld mixer for it? Or would that do something unwanted? Um, you can use a handheld mixer, absolutely, for ease of use. But um, uh, Daphne has me on this arm workout that I think I, I need to continue say, to build my workout, muscles. Right? Yeah, get my workout in, especially today. So, <laughs> so that's it. Um, so I hope these recipes were helpful to everybody. Um, I know that our 
friends and family are going to be having these specific <laughs> recipes um, uh, this week. And Brooke, thank you so much. Daphne, do you have any more to add today? I know this was a longer podcast, but I think I hope I'm hopeful everybody enjoyed it. No, Brooke, thank you. And Vesame, thank you too. I love to share recipes with people because I think one, a lot of people feel that having a plant-based Thanksgiving meal is extra work. And I think what the two of you have just demonstrated is that you can make a whole meal in less than an hour, uh, baking time excluded, of course, but these are, are just flavorful recipes with ingredients that for the most part you already have in your kitchen mm -hmm. and they are things that everyone's going to love. Um, you know, as we were talking about okay. before we actually went live, you can mix and match if there are things that you like a little bit better, things that you don't like. If you want to use beluga lentils as opposed to green lentils, there's a lot of flexibility. But the fundamentals of the recipes that Brooke has on our website, we would encourage you to try because Besame and I have tried them and they're delicious. Yeah. And Besame, we're glad that you shared with us some secret family recipes um, <laughs> and look forward to spending more time in both of your kitchens and finding out more tips tricks and being thankful and grateful. Um, I want to be thankful and grateful to both of you for spending time with us today. So thanks to everyone who joined Perfectly Planted. We want to wish you a wonderful Thanksgiving if you're in the part of the world that celebrates Thanksgiving. As I said, we are grateful for you and I'm grateful for these two wonderful women who joined me today. And we want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Be well and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care.